Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about graph quadratic functions using transformations, and we're going to talk about stretch or compress the quadratic function here. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. In our previous video, we talked about the vertical shift as well as the horizontal shift. But what causes the quadratic to, well, stretch or compress here? And that is what we call our a value in front of our function. So let's get a basic one here. f of x is equal to a x squared. And notice it's just that a, va a value. So what happens here with that a value? So if 0 is less than the absolute value of a, which is less than 1, the graph of our f of x, a x squared, will be wider than the graph of f of x equals x squared. If the absolute value of x is greater than 1, the graph of f of x equals ax squared will be skinnier than the graph of f of x equals x squared. So we can see that the skinnier and wider shape here, so if we have it, we almost can see in a um, putting them over each other here, we have a skinnier version will be, you know, kind of like looking like this, and then a wider version could be looking wide like that. And it's pretty self-explanatory how that happens. So let's go hop on to MapleLearn to see this in action and how the A value changing changes the shape of this graph. So we're going to go to learn.maplesoft.com and we're given this nice tool here to graph some functions. So let's go graph a quadratic in the form of y equals ax squared. And let's see what happens. Well, again, like always, we hit the light bulb here and we can parameterize the variable a. Now let's go bring this over closer to our graph we can see right there. All right, so what do we got here now? Well, we see y equals a, and we have some range. Let's go zoom in. Uh, we talked about zooming in uh, vertically. So we're gonna lock only, only zoom in vertically here. Let's just zoom that in. Get a nice little graph here. All right, so this is a little better picture of what's happening. And I'm gonna lock this current view. So again, we have, well, a equals, oh, let's go change that there, not to be continuous. I don't like it being continuous. It's not there to be one. All right, there we go. So like always, let's go graph a second equation, y equals just x squared. And then that's where our a value is one. And notice the two graphs are right on top of each other. Uh, we don't see any difference here. But what happened when we had an a value that was, let's say, greater than one. What we noticed here, right, it's kind of shrinking. It's getting skinnier in the graph. And so we, we talked about that earlier, that when our a value is greater, or the absolute value of a value is greater than one, we get a skinnier graph. Now one thing we kind of didn't talk about is what happens if it's negative. So a negative seven, if I go down here, it's the same skinniness as before, but we have it flipped upside down, a negative a value right here. It makes the graph flipped over the x axis, okay? Now notice we talked about well, what happens if a is between zero and one. Well, we actually can make another, a little parameter here. So what if we did this? Uh, y equals, let's change our, I think we the same variable here, x squared. Oh, you gotta change the variable. Let's call it b for right now. Okay, instead of a, just for this video as well. It's not really called a, but let's go change the parameter here. Now what happens, let's say it's between negative one and a positive one, right? Those are our rules. The absolute value of a has to be between zero and one, so parameter would be from negative one to one. And we're gonna select continuous here to see a better view of that. Now notice, let's go bring it up to the top. We have a light blue graph right here, and that's graphing it here. And we can see that as we get between, you know, the value of B or A normally is getting closer and closer to zero, 0.275 as our function here, we get a very wide graph and it gets wider and wider and wider. Okay. And then negative flips upside down and we get close and close till we hit that negative one right there with the base function. And we do the same thing as we go up. You can see it's so wider, wider, very wide, very wide, all of a sudden flips, becomes a cup instead of a frown. 
and that's when our A value is positive. Now, let's see if we can reparameterize this here to show everything. So I'm gonna go back to my first function. I'm gonna change my gear icon here. And let's go between, let's say negative, you know, three, ah, not 13, three. Keep it simple here to positive three. All right, I'm gonna make it continuous. Let's see what happens. All right, so our blue, or sorry, our green function right now is at negative three. And we have all the other functions on top of each other, so they're all at y equals x squared. Well, if we move this, we can see we're getting wider and wider in the negative, and then we go to the positive, boom, it's wider and wider, flips upside down, and that a value is changing, 0.39, right here. It's positive, and then we hit one, hopefully we can get right on the value, depending on how good I am with my mouse, bam. Right there, we hit that one, and we're right on it right here. We keep on going, and we, oh, the A value gets larger, 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 and it gets skinnier. You can see that, skinnier than our base function right there, all the way to three, all right? So hopefully this was a good visual for you to see what happens as the quadratic function of the form y equals ax squared changes and what causes this to be skinnier or wider. If you want to check out this website, learn.maplesoft.com is a great tool, and you can explore all the fun math features on there and help you with your studies. So, as always, thanks for watching.